Hey everyone, it's another day, so we got another video, and today I have my mic in front of my face, so the audio should be much better. I'm also going to tweak the audio using audio software. I got some pretty good feedback on the last video that transitioning from this view to the camera or to the you know, picture over picture view back to it just screwed up the audio so I'm going to fix that this time anyway today's video is going to be a starter video on the labyrinth it's going to be the first video in either a uh, two video series or a three video series we'll see how much I ramble uh, but today I'm looking at my little uh, table of contents we're going to cover the sacred valley and how it relates to the labyrinth then we're going to move over to the transcendent ruins talk about some uh, connections between the two uh, how they're both the labyrinth how they're connected to each other somehow then we're going to talk about what the transcendent ruins are why they rose up and then we're going to talk about osriel and his connection to the labyrinth how he predates everything and then draw some connections between his skill sets the transcendent ruins and uh, potentially sacred valley uh, that's today's video uh, but this whole series we're going to get into how like what the original black flame empire uh, did with the with the labyrinth how they screwed up we're going to get into some timelines with some other monarchs and just go we're going to deep dive into the labyrinth then i'm going to throw out some super speculative theories on uh, what osriel was up to before the dread gods uh, maybe talk through why the founders of sacred valley all ascended to the heavens and then talk about like what the labyrinth was before it was sealed before it was a, a vault for hunger madra artifacts because that's interesting like, what was the labyrinth for originally because it predates everything we know it was there before osriel he used it, but it was there before him. Uh, anyway, let's get into the first part. I think you'll like it. All right, let's break this down. I'm standing now, by the way. Not important. So, the mystery of the labyrinth. The mysterious crisscrossing maze that takes up the entire continent that the old Black Flame Empire existed on and potentially spans the globe. We don't know. But we do know that it is the foundation of Sacred Valley. Because when Serial pulled her report on the four holy peaks of Sacred Valley, we see that Yoma Mountain possesses the largest and most obvious entrance into the labyrinth that forms the foundation of the entire Sacred Valley. So we can extrapolate quite a bit from this. Yoma Mountain has the largest and most obvious entrance, which means there are smaller and less obvious entrances all across Sacred Valley. We learn one such place in the Ancestor's Tomb on, what's that other mountain called? I should know this. The mountain ringed with light. Whoever's watching this knows exactly what it is. It doesn't matter. Actually, I'm going to pause it. Mount Samara. That's where the other place is. And there's probably an entrance at every peak and maybe other places. We don't know. We don't know because we don't know anything about Sacred Valley other than it was built on top or that the valley was populated for some reason. And the elders, the Jade elders, because you have to be Jade if you're going to be an elder in Sacred Valley get to go into the shallowest levels of the labyrinth but they are so weak that they don't go deep enough in to provoke provoke the dread gods which many have speculated is why sacred valley is so weak so that they can't go further in and tap into things that would call the dread gods uh, it's also interesting because the nether gate opens every 10 years and nothing else that we know of opens every 10 years except for the gate to the other side of the world that the Aurelius family uses. But no other labyrinth door opens on its own that we, that we know of. Uh, some of the other ones might have, 
back in the original uh, Black Dragon Empire, uh, but they're all sealed off or broken. But the Nether Gate opens every 10 years for sure. That's it's uh, almost unique. All right, let's skip over Osriel real quick and talk about the transcendent ruins because an interesting phenomenon happened in book two when they arrived at the transcendent ruins and Yaren is talking to Jai Sen, the uh, Jai clan member who is explaining the transcendent ruins to her, uh, when he says that the transcendent ruins were built by masters ancient beyond memory. Uh, no living sacred artist could construct something like that these days. And the truth about it would put your mind ablaze. Uh, then he goes on to explain that seven or eight days ago at the time of their conversation, and then a lot of other text happens, but I condensed it. Uh, trees split apart and the ruins burst into the sky. And then Will, clever Will, uh, has Yaren call that out. Wait, seven days before now? Is that what you said? Which is, it's a direct implication that the events that occurred seven days prior between Yaren and the Heaven's Glory School and the Ancestor's Tomb there's a direct correlation between that, the scripts of that tomb being broken by uh, the Sword Sage's remnant and then the collapse of the temple and the rising of the Ancestor's Tomb. Or sorry, the rising of the Transcendent Ruins. What could be the reason? I don't know. We need to know more about the Transcendent Ruins. Luckily, by the end of the book, we learn that the Transcendent Ruins is a soulsmith foundry. Lyndon discovers this when he's at the top. When he's looking around and he, he notices a couple of interesting things that I totally forgot about three times rereading. But now that I went back and looked at this passage, there's some interesting stuff here. Uh, for example, I think the most interesting thing, it's this. A circle, blank on one half, the other half complex and twisted with a network of lines. To me, this screams some sort of ancient um, emblem or crest that we don't know of. But we're about to go to a tournament where all the major families are going to be represented. So it will be interesting if any of them or any of the cults or whatever have this kind of an emblem. So look for that in the next book. Another interesting thing, uh, this weapon. A long glaive made of forged madra with a blood red shaft a blood red shaft and a gleaming golden sword blade at the end sat on a frame halfway up the wall i don't think that means anything but it's interesting because uh, there's like a golden sword school in sacred valley and then blood red bleeding phoenix probably nothing there but interesting nonetheless so the most important thing though is now we know the transcendent ruins is a soul smith foundry so Something triggers in Sacred Valley, causes the Soul Smith Foundry to rise up and start sucking in Vital Aura. What could this be? Well, we know that the scripts that were damaged sucked in Vital Aura. So perhaps it's some power reclamation tool. Um, but I think there's something more to it. I think that the Soul Smith Foundry is like an elevator where it needs to power up before it can continue doing its experimentations or something. So it rises up siphons all the vital aura from the era to power itself and then it goes back down and does whatever it was supposed to do so interesting stuff let's back up a bit not to that and talk about osriel uh, because there's some connections here as there always are uh, so osriel we learn about his stuff when Serial arrives at cradle and pulls up all of his historical sites and they're listed so the mountain under which he had been born in a dark chamber of stone reminds me of the wandering titan uh, i'm not going to go there the ruins of the library where he had once developed his own path that's fascinating uh, the pillars where he debated the 10 greatest scholars of the day i have a theory about what he was debating about it's total speculation there's nothing to it so i won't talk about it here uh, this but this is the most important part so the city of anvils sealed now 
where he'd forged his first weapon. Then the labyrinth where he died and returned to life. Okay, well, a very intelligent questioner who is anonymous, I guess, asked Will if the Hall of Hammers where Osreo made his weapon was part of the labyrinth. Now this commenter forgot the name, but he was close. The Hall of Hammers inside the city of Anvils. Uh, but Will White said can't comment. So what does that mean? It means that this questioner probably asked a great question and Will didn't want to be spoilery. So I'm going to assume that the city of Anvils was part of the labyrinth and is now sealed. Why is it sealed? I don't know. Probably because the dread gods would come and destroy stuff. It's probably where some of the um, ancient higher level lord herald and monarch weapons made out of hunger madra were were made it's where osreo made his weapon he probably used materials to make his scythe although that's that's big speculation and that's what the easter egg is about so uh did osreo forge his own scythe yes he did uh the story of osreo's scythe is going to have to wait until much later but he was a legendary soulsmith of his time and then Will goes to confirm that uh, Azrael was indeed a monarch uh, because he had the same cultivation level as Shamiara, uh, but he would have been considered a freak even among people of that tier. So even among monarchs, he would have been scary. So we have the labyrinth in Sacred Valley that probably sucks all the Oro away. We have a sacred beast named Elder Whisper who predates Dread Gods. Okay? Think about that. We have the Ancestor's Tomb being demolished. Elder Whisper observes this. And we have, in that same timeline, the Labyrinth activating a Soulsmith Foundry that was in charge of Subject 1, was in charge of experimenting with Dread Beasts, and in the same book, or in in unsold we have Osriel pointed out uh, to have connections with the labyrinth where he died and came back to life not going to get into that where he forged his own weapon and then Will's uh, in the word of Will has said that he's a legendary soulsmith so there's three connections there Osriel's connected to the labyrinth he's a legendary soulsmith the transcendent ruins was a soulsmith foundry and some sort of like battery and then we have Sacred Valley, which is a whole slew of mysteries. So, pretty fascinating stuff. Um, and just to be thorough, um, it was never confirmed that the Transcendent Ruins were part of the Labyrinth until Book 4, uh, when Ethan confirms it. Um, and then Lyndon calls out that he's seen multiple entrances, and Ethan is not surprised, because he's Ethan. So, that is this teaser video. Um, in fact, I'm going to, I'm going to pop out to, uh, the bigger, the bigger thing right now. Okay. So in this video, we've discussed quite a bit and to keep this video under 15 minutes, I'm going to wrap it up and we will resume our studies of the labyrinth tomorrow. Uh, but what we've talked about in this video is the foundations of the labyrinth or the foundations of sacred Valley is the labyrinth. So the Sacred Valley has a much heavier density of the labyrinth than anywhere else we've seen, right? We've seen some causality of messing with the labyrinth in Sacred Valley affecting other parts of the labyrinth. When we get to the Transcendent Ruins, they've risen. And then we learn that the Transcendent Ruins are a foundry. And not only just a soulsmithing foundry, but a foundry that acts as an elevator for resources maybe vital aura it it rises up sucks up a bunch of vital aura for to power whatever it needs and then probably goes back down to do its vile experiments from back in the day then we talked about osriel and his connection to the labyrinth where he died there and came back to life somehow not going to get into that too much but i'm still mentioning it because it's, it's important i guess more importantly, he very likely created his weapon there. 
And then even more importantly, the labyrinth wasn't sealed back then. If he was there making forging his weapon in a city of anvils, so a city designed for smithing and soul smithing, it, it was probably populated. Unless Osriel was so strong that he was able to go through and map and find these places. But it wasn't sealed then. Because Suriel says that the city is sealed now. So that implies it wasn't sealed when he was there. It's valuable information. So Osriel predates the labyrinth being sealed. Osriel predates the Black Flame Empire. He predates the Dread Gods. And he was a legendary soulsmith. Does some of the work that he did have to do with what the soulsmith foundry elevator construct was working on? I don't know. That group was trying to make the Dread Gods. What could Osriel have made that influenced their work? We'll talk about it in the next video. Thank you for watching.